All right, so um, welcome to RollingWaysCoaching.com. Today I'm just going to talk about exercise, true functional exercise. So there's a lot of people talking about functional exercise and what it really means. But then you see a lot of people that do strength and conditioning, but yet they're in gyms getting people all working at a, a warehouse and getting people to do exercises on benches. If you do an exercise, I don't care what it is, any exercise on the bench, it doesn't matter if you put kettlebells on the end, chains on the end, it's not functional exercise. Functional exercise means your, your body is under its own control. Your center of gravity is totally controlled by you, not by some machine or some bench or anything that you're all sitting on. Um, that takes your reality out of the equation because in functionality in life, everything is about true movement when you stand, when you walk, when you run. Every single time you do an informal strength and conditioning, you do it for an athlete who is actually standing. Except rowing, there's no sport where you're, and horse riding, there's no sport where you're actually sitting down really. So you have to take the take into account the functionality and the requirement of the person. It's not just about being strong, it's about being strong specifically for your sport. So rather than get people to just do bench press, where you only work in the um, phasic system, um, you know, sitting on a bench in one of those little machines and just push it where the only thing that is happening is that the phasic muscles are creating movement but the tonic muscles or the stabilizing muscles aren't having to control anything what we're actually going to do is give you an exercise where one, you're standing, so you're actually using gravity two, you're actually having to integrate your arms and legs which is a functional exercise and three, you're actually working the same muscles but using your phasic and tonic muscles at the same time so I'm going to show you a cable push now, this will simulate any sport or any activity whether or not you're, if you think about this pattern of movement, if I do this, one, I'm integrating my hips, two, I'm using the shoulder, the arm, the tricep, the chest, the neck, because the neck has to be stabilized, the actual spine, and the legs. So I'm using the push against gravity on the ground, generating force through my trunk, up through my arm. Now, this could be for a boxer, if I did it like this, or this could be for somebody who's like, a cricketer who has to throw a ball or a baseball player or anyone that actually needs any real movement where they're standing and pushing or throwing. Now that pattern movement covers three patterns which is the lunge, which are known as primary patterns as told by Paul Cherek, the lunge pattern, the twist pattern and the push pattern. So if I'm working with a boxer, I'm not going to get to just lay on the bench and do bench press because that doesn't correlate to the sport because every single time they throw a punch, they're standing. So I'm going to do something that's specific to the sport, which is standing with a push cable. Now that is what we call functional exercise. So it's about time we start talking about exercise, but actually doing the exercises that we're talking about that correlate to any of your sports. And that's the most important thing I want to kind of get across to you guys today. If you're going to do any form of exercise, you look at the pattern of the movement in the sport and then equate the type of exercise that closely simulates that pattern for that sport rather than, I'm going to go to the gym and make you big and strong because that's not strength and ambition. Any amateur can do that.